The Amazon encompasses nine countries in Latin America. More than half of the Amazon rainforest is in Brazil. Over the past two decades, Brazil has been praised for reducing the rate of deforestation down by 80%. This success has global significance, both for species conservation and climate regulation. Brazil is one of the few major world economies that's managed to develop without having cleared the majority of its forests. And perhaps one of the most remarkable environmental success stories of the last century has been the decline in deforestation in Brazil. However, in the last few years, the rate of change of deforestation has bottomed out and we're starting to see less and less decreases in deforestation. And that presents new challenges for how to address and further reduce deforestation. Because SCI is its purpose and its objectives are about trying to situate development opportunities and challenges alongside environmental objectives and environmental goals. So one of the things that we always try and bring is to work as closely as possible with partners in government and other organizations in, in, in business and in civil society. So we've worked with the Brazilian government on a number of different levels. Briefly, we've worked in the state of Pará, in the northeast Amazon, helping to develop a new piece of legislation to govern the regeneration of forests on degraded land. We've worked at the national level to look at what is, how can we understand how the pattern of deforestation relate to who lives in different areas of the Amazon. So who's responsible for the different ups and downs of deforestation that we see. And thirdly, we've worked at the scale of the whole country to assess What's the planned expansion for extraction of, of, of mineral resources and planned expansion of hydroelectric dams? The boys were playing outside, and my six-year-old told me that he heard a squirrel screaming up in a tree, and then all of a sudden that squirrel fell out of the tree with a black rat snake. And the black rat snake was wrapped around the squirrel, and they fell on the ground, and the, the, the snake rolled uh, a short ways over in the yard. And I guess the, our dog tried to pick it up and then thought better about it and dropped it. And my son said that the snake rolled over to our little trail in our patch of woods. And then he ran and he came and got us. So by the time my husband and I got out there, the snake was coiled around that squirrel and the squirrel was dead by then and we were able to watch it eat that squirrel it took two and a half hours and the longest part was when the snake was trying to get the 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 front legs yeah in his mouth that was really hard but once he managed that it, it went pretty fast and then it was just amazing to see how quickly the squirrel just moved down into the center of his stomach. And then when he was finished, he just slithered out of the yard. So we, we were able to film part of it, and I took a lot of photographs, and I've put them together in this uh, slideshow. So if you're interested, you can watch it. Uh, enjoy. It was pretty amazing wildlife in our backyard.
to Brazil's what is really truly a world-class protected area system and what challenges does that face and that drew particular interest from Brazil's federal government they invited us uh, to be participating in a constructive debate in the Senate with Brazil's highest legislation uh, council to try and identify what are some of the challenges that this presents and how can they make the most of these unique environmental resources but minimize the impacts on the environment and maximize benefits for Brazilian society. Brazil is now at a crossroads where decisions taken today will have significant and cascading effects into the future. Brazil is, as we know, facing many political and economic challenges in the coming years. And I think what's most critical for Brazil is it's already managed to demonstrate to the world that it's the leader in environmental conservation, not just amongst developing and emerging nations, but also globally. And it shouldn't carry the risk of losing that mantle. What, it, what I think the priority is, is to realize that the conservation and sustainable use of its unique natural resources is a foundation for its future development trajectory and should not be seen as a barrier that is liable to be ransacked in an unsustainable way, but instead it provides, if it's managed in a sustainable way, a real opportunity for a long-term development pathway that Brazil can sustain. a solution to illegal logging in rainforests. This is what illegal logging looks like. Though it may seem like a small operation, in actuality, up to 90% of the rainforest logging that occurs worldwide every year is illegal. And year after year, Despite many global efforts, it's accelerating rapidly. But how is this possible? It's possible because today, illegal loggers have virtually no risk of ever being caught. The current state of the art in detection is satellite surveillance, but with satellites, the updates are so infrequent that we can only know about logging activity days or weeks after it's already occurred. By then, the wood has already been cut and removed and has disappeared into the world market. What this means is that for all the global investments in stopping deforestation, our only recourse is often to measure the damage that has already been done. There has never been a scalable way to actively prevent illegal logging as it occurs. My name is Topher White, and I'm a physicist and software engineer. We founded Rainforest Connection in 2013 because after consulting with experts in the field, we wanted to try an alternative approach to this problem. Since then, we've developed the first real-time system for stopping illegal logging. It's an amazingly simple system. We take old, recycled smartphones, retrofit them with solar panels, and hide them in the tree canopy where they listen constantly for the sound profiles of illegal logging. The very moment that a chainsaw is used in the forest and using the standard GSM cell phone network, an alert is sent to local partners who can intervene immediately and actually halt the logging. This entire process happens within a matter of minutes. The devices cost very little, have no negative ecological impact on the forest, and can detect chainsaw noises up to a kilometer in the distance. But does it actually work? We took it to Indonesia, to one of the world's most endangered rainforests, to find out. Our first partner in the field, Kalawet, maintains a rainforest sanctuary in Sumatra to protect gibbons, a small ape that, like countless animals, has been driven out by illegal logging. Even their well-guarded reserve is... That's his name? They sleeping in there? Cleaning. Barely moving. In cooperation with Calouette, we installed a prototype of our system in their reserve. And only one day later, we detected our first chainsaw noises. 
We were able to respond immediately and arrive on the scene within minutes, effectively interrupting the loggers in the act. As news of our initial success has spread, we've been contacted by other groups who want the system too. But first, we want to perfect the design where we began, with our partner, Calouette. To move forward, we need more resources to expand our engineering team and bring our system to a point of maturity, whereby we can scale up and offer rainforest connection to other rainforest reserves, NGOs, local partners, and communities to assist in effectively protecting the Earth's last remaining rainforests. With this simple technology and your help, we think we can stop the black market logging industry. The Amazon represents over half of the planet's remaining rainforests and comprises the largest and most biodiverse tract of tropical rainforest in the world. Mango farming and gold mining are among the many industries on its beaches. Uh, we have the large-scale gold miners which are responsible for destroying huge areas of rainforest, especially with the global price of gold being so high at the moment. Then we have smaller scale farmers, agriculturers, people that depend on the rainforest for living. And then of course we have the wood, uh, the wood business as well, people exporting timber uh, at very high prices. So day and day, year by year, we're losing more rainforests. The animals, especially big primates, like spider monkeys, woolly monkeys and holler monkeys, they used to move far. Approximately 80,000 to 160,000 trees are cut down daily worldwide, equivalent to 36 football fields every minute. Due to massive felling down of trees, various species of animals are lost. They lose their habitat and are forced to move to a new location. Scientists predict that climate change is set to become one of the biggest threats to the world's wildlife, driving the extinction of many animal and plant species. In addition to forest destruction, the mining in Peru also releases pollutants into the Madre de Dios River. The soil mercury, it's a desert of conditions there. It's hot, it's dry now. Um, you don't see the reoccupation of the gold mine areas by species that have been either pushed away or lost from the system. The small mines look like deep pits in forest clearings, up to 10 meters deep with debris and mud at the bottom. And the mercury levels in the human population are sky high in that region of, of uh, Peru, for example. La Pampa is home to 40,000 illegal miners. Some experts calculated the activity was bringing more profit into the country than drug trafficking. The illegal mining has brought with it a number of other crimes, including slave labor and sexual exploitation of miners. For several months of having the, the capuchin monkeys in captivity, it's been a journey from when they arrived as babies, bringing them up, checking their health, feeding them, integrating them as a group, and now finally after several months we're able to bring them back into the wild. Thank you. 